Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Yosha and I'm your go-to girl for all things real. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you an update on melatonin gummies that I reviewed in the last video. If you hadn't seen it, I'm going to link that on the card above. But I started taking melatonin gummies a few months ago when I was handling grief after losing my sister to cancer. And it's been a little over three months since then and I wanted to basically come at you guys with an update on melatonin and let you all know how I've been using it, any side effects that I've noticed, and if I still recommend the gummies. So, so you know that this is not sponsored, no one's telling me, this is my bottle. I don't know if you remember the other video, but I actually had this big bottle that I just purchased and I had the little bottle. I did finish out the little bottle probably about over a month ago and I'm a little under halfway through this bottle. Like, I don't know if y'all can see. I do not take the melatonin every day because I don't want to become reliant on it, but I do take it about three to four nights a week. And I try to not take two of these unless I really have not been sleeping well like the last two days, then I would take two. The other thing is I notice that if I'm stressed about something or if I'm just lacking peace, like let's say that I had a really bad fight or a really bad argument with someone that I love. I am not going to be able to sleep. So peace is so important with good sleep. Lack of stress, lowering your stress is such a good thing to consider when worrying about sleep. So I don't want you to feel like you can suppress anything with this that you may be going through. If your mind is disturbed because you're going through something, then this may not help you. Also, if you have been exposed to high dosages of medication that also helps you sleep, then this may be like taking a Tylenol, okay? Y'all mamas know what I'm talking about. If you had a pain and you had to take a Tylenol and it just doesn't do anything, you need something that's extra strength. You get what I'm saying? So that's the disclaimer I want to put out there before I start talking about my experiences. So for me, this product still works, okay? And this is a, a product you can find at Walmart. You can get the smaller bottle for under four bucks. And I want to say that this one was under $6. Um, it is 120 of them in the container and it has lasted me for about two months and I'm still, like I said, a little under halfway filled with gummies. I like to take these during the week. You know, when I started trying to get back on a schedule because my son was starting school, I was like, I can't be going to sleep at 3 o'clock in the morning and getting him up for school at 6.45 that's dead. So I actually use these to help aid in that routine. So here are some things that help me. First things is at the end of the day, you got to get yourself like a bedtime routine. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you need to set up something that you're going to do for yourself every single night so that your body can understand when it's time to shut down. I started working from home back in March of this year and I'm still at home right now. And it's a blessing, but at the same time, sometimes my days run together because you're not taking that physical commute. You're not having that physical start and end of your day. So with that, sometimes your days get longer and you're working longer hours. I know that that's what's happened for me. Additionally, I've become my son's kindergarten's teacher assistant at home. And that is very um that's a workload in itself okay like i salute all you parents out there that have been helping your kids from home because it is a challenge and you need to thank your teachers because your teachers have to deal with so many little personalities and we're only getting a taste of what it's like to deal with our own personality our own little mini personality but that's neither here nor there i like to try to do my work stuff in a separate area from where i sleep a co-worker actually gave me that advice a while ago and I started doing it and it really makes all the difference. If you are working on your stuff for work in your bedroom, in your bed, then you're not mentally telling yourself when it's time for work to end. And the same thing applies if you work from home. Like, yes, you can set up a work from home area, but try not to do your work in your bed. If you have to do it in your room, that's fine, but 
try not to do it in your bed. And if you're like freelance, you're an influencer, try not to do your like social media stuff in your bed either because you'll end up on your phone for hours, not even realizing it. Now, I like to personally take my melatonin between nine and 10 in the evening. The instructions say you're supposed to chew two of these once a day, 30 minutes before bedtime, and you're supposed to chew it up before swallowing. I recommend that you try to do it an hour before bedtime because 30 minutes, sometimes I take my one and it does not kick in 30 minutes later. An hour later, I start feeling it. After 11 p.m., I don't take it. Even if I need it and I can't sleep, I don't take it. And the reason why I don't is because these will make you feel drowsy and droggy in the morning. If you take it super late, midnight, 1 a.m. because you can't sleep, it'll kick in and it might kick in at 2 a.m. But guess what? When it's time for you to get up at 7 or 6.30, you're not going to want to get up and your body's going to feel that lug, that sluggish feeling. And you don't want that. So try to remember to take your melatonin at least two hours before you lay down. So for me, I try to be in bed by 11.30ish, taking it between 9 and 10 is a good sweet spot for me. If it's after 11.30, if it's after 11, I really don't like taking it because I will still feel sleepy when those alarms go off. Now, I like to take my melatonin, take a shower because that's that shower before bed for me is like necessary for me to get a good night rest. I can't be in like the day's filth and sweat and not take a bath and then go to bed because I just don't feel comfortable and relaxed. So. I like to take my shower. Sometimes I'll take my shower like right after I give Saya his bath or whatever so that I can get in my bed and lay down right after. Now, another thing you have to do is put your electronics down. Like let your mind rest. Try not to watch anything on TV, Hulu, Netflix, social media that's gonna rile you up and have your attention. Like you can put on some calm music or something, but just kind of relax yourself. And that's going to help you get to sleep. So I know I said I was going to talk about an update, but I guess I gave y'all tips too. Side effects. Things that I noticed after an extended period of taking this. This increases your heart rate. Also, I realized that it gives me the feeling of that of a muscle relaxer. Um, it's not going to make you feel like you took a Percocet or an Oxycodone, but it's just like a mild relaxed feeling you might start to feel like your legs relaxing you might start to feel your body relaxing the other thing is it does say not to mix this with alcohol and i have by mistake not intentionally um but like i've had a glass of wine or you know a margarita or something with dinner and then i take this right after when you mix the two together it's gonna make you feel kind of like a crossfade you know if you're taking um muscle relaxer oxycodone anything that kind of gives you like a high type feeling you're gonna have your high from the medicine mixed with the alcohol's tipsiness and it can make your head feel a little dizzy it can make you feel a little woozy so that's why it's saying not to mix them together most medications actually say don't take them with alcohol. So yeah, those are pretty much the side effects that I've realized. It's really nothing that makes me feel nervous. The heart thing, I don't like my heart feeling like it's increasing, but it has helped me tremendously with getting more rest. And when you, I have more rest, I feel better about myself. I feel better the next day and I'm not so cranky. So if you've been having trouble sleeping, let me know, um, you know, if you're going to try this or if you've tried something else that's helped. You know, last time I made a video about this, I did tell people to drop down their recommendations and people gave me all kind of ideas there. So I'm open to hearing them here, too. I've also tried the bedtime tea by Yogi. And I guess, I mean, this video is not about that, but I'll say that these have been more effective for me than the Yogi tea. The Yogi tea is it does not really knock me out now you can put take the two together and if you're in a relaxed mood it should help but eh, these are more effective the other thing that i want to mention that i forgot is that if your sleep is interrupted by loud noise or anything your child has a nightmare it's gonna interrupt your sleep you're not gonna go right back to sleep so <laughs> that's all i have let me know if you have any questions recommendations comments subscribe to my channel Thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see y'all in my next one. Bye.